I would like to summarize the Penelope B trial. So the Penelope B trial was um, a double-blind placebo control phase three study, um, which randomized 1,250 patients to be treated with palbociclib for one year or placebo in addition to standard and adjuvant endocrine therapy. And um, patients enrolled were patients who have been treated uh, with neoadjuvant chemotherapy and they had to have residual disease. They were all, of course, hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative breast cancer patients. And uh, the residual disease had to be graded according to the CPS EG score, and they had to have a score of either three or two with uh, still nodal involvement after. Uh, surgery. Uh, the patients, um, as said, were treated with one year and then, of course, received up to five years or even longer of endocrine therapy. Patients were uh, very young. The median age was below 50 years and the majority uh, were premenopausal patients. They, the majority had a CPS EG score of three with 60% of those. But because uh, we looked at the centrally assessed P67, we had only um, uh, 25% who had a high P67. High was here defined as greater than 15%. Uh, Otherwise, it was a relatively um, high risk population. And a, a third of the premenopausal women received an LHRH analog in addition to mainly tamoxifen, whereas the postmenopausal patients were mainly receiving an aromatase inhibitor as standard endocrine therapy. We looked at the data. Uh, the primary endpoint was the um, invasive disease-free survival, and we looked at the data after median follow-up of 43 months. And we could not overall detect a significant difference between the two treatment arms with a hazard ratio of 0.9 and a p-value of 0.5 something. But what we did see was actually um, a big difference of more than 4% delta at two years and uh, around 3.5% delta at three years. But thereafter, the curves came uh, together and uh, disappeared. We did at this uh, final invasive disease-free survival analysis, also an analysis or interim analysis of the overall survival and could not see any differences um, at this point in time as well. The safety were as expected. What did we learn from the Penelope B trial? Well, it's very difficult to say what is the reason for this result. Um, it could well be that we have, because we have this high uh, risk population enrolled, that we were mainly treating already uh, metastasized patients and we could just delay the time when they had um, their relapse rather than really curing the patients. This is one hypothesis. Of course, another hypothesis is that one year of pulbociclib uh, or a CDK4-6 inhibitor is too short. We won't know that uh, from our data. We only will know that when we see the long-term results from all the other adjuvant uh, CDK4-6 inhibitor studies who also enrolled um, this uh, type of patient population, uh, of course, amongst other patients. So these are the two main hypotheses. And what is also very important is that we need to have a long-term follow-up for our hormone receptor positive for to negative breast cancer patients. Another question was why we only used one year. We have to keep in mind that when we designed and started the trial, it was end of 2013, 2014, there was no approval for pulbociclib in either country. And so these were really early days. We didn't know uh, exactly about the safety profile and then that's why uh, we decided to have to go just for one year of pulvociclib as the other uh, trials decided to go for two years and the Natalie trial even for three years of a CDK4-6 inhibitor in addition uh, to standard endocrine therapy.